Good evening. The campaign is over and in less than nine hours' time, people will begin to vote on the question, should Scotland be an independent country? Yes, Scotland and Better Together have been out in force across the country, hoping to secure the vote that will either make Scotland independent or remain in the United Kingdom. Here's our political editor, Brian Taylor. Final hours, final offers, final thoughts, before the people of Scotland decide and choose. Glasgow city centre and the Yes camp say independence empowers the population, liberating them to found a prosperous and just society. Activists say the campaign itself has energised the people. Everybody's coming together, they're gathering, gathering in corners and halls and pubs all over the country talking about this in ways that we've never spoken about politics before and nothing will ever be the same after that. Yeah, everyone here today, I didn't know them six months ago, two years ago, so it's incredible. I think we'll all miss each other and I think we'll definitely miss the campaign because it's been incredible. It's brought ordinary, non-political Scottish people together um, and motivated them. And you feel as if we have the opportunity for a participatory democracy, which is a lies ahead of us. On the campaign trail, the First Minister urged voters to sign up for independence. All right, fine. Thank you. Thank you and canvassing the coming generation, his deputy argued that they were offering the positive prospectus. It's been a long campaign, a hard campaign, but one that has been energising, exhilarating, empowering. I've never known a time when people are so interested in politics, engaged and informed. And I think there is a, a real sense of optimism and opportunity. People are realistic. They understand independence isn't a magic wand, but I think increasingly they know that if we vote yes, then we take control of the decisions, the powers, the resources we need in Scotland to build a better country for the next generation to protect our public services, create more jobs and make sure we are not bystanders again in the decisions of governments in London that we don't vote for. Supporters of the union gather for a Better Together rally in Glasgow. They insist they are the quiet majority. I've spoken to friends, I've spoken out, I, for the first time in my 70 years, I have a poster in my window, a thing I would never have dreamt of doing. I, I've been expatriate for 25 years and thank goodness I'm home now because I would have been furious. And it's, it's sad to think that in the next general election we won't get the same percentage of voters. It's been terrific, it's been, it's been like part of a, a, a huge family. It's, it's wonderful. I, I love it. Thank you. On stage, Gordon Brown says Scotland can have a more powerful parliament in the UK, able to protect the NHS. And he says those who are swithering should vote no. Have confidence tomorrow and have confidence enough to say with all our friends, we've had no answers. They do not know what they are doing. They are leading us into a trap. Have confidence and say to our friends, for reasons of solidarity, sharing, justice, pride in Scotland, the only answer for Scotland's sake and for Scotland's future is vote no. The campaign has been energetic, argumentative and intense, with overwhelming public engagement. Both campaign teams say it is about the future. Which future? Your referendum, your choice. Brian Taylor, reporting Scotland. There have been rallies in Perth and Edinburgh tonight for Yes Scotland and Better Together as both sides made their final pitch to the electorate. The final opinion polls suggest that although the no campaign may be slightly in front, the gap between the two remains extremely tight. Here's our political correspondent, Tim Reid. The final night before Scotland makes its decision and the last chance for those who oppose Scottish independence to project their message to voters. There's a pride and a passion and a cantankerousness in each and every one of us. We have so much going for us. There are so many reasons to be proud of our great nation. But our flag of St Andrews is our banner. It should never be our blindfold to the risks of independence. At the last campaign rally for the pro-independence movement tonight, praise for what was described as the greatest democratic campaign in Scotland's history. It behoves each and every one of us, recognising that underdog status, 
to campaign with our utmost till 10 o'clock tomorrow evening to persuade our fellow citizens that independence is the right road forward for Scotland. It is after two years of campaigning, all over now bar the voting. The closing stages of this referendum have been watched around the world and the result will be beamed around the world and the spotlight is on Scotland's decision, yes to independence or no. Tim Reid reporting Scotland, Glasgow. Well, Tim Reid joins us now. Uh, Tim, what are the latest opinion polls suggesting? Well, David, the very final hours in this very long and extraordinary campaign. And with those final hours come the final opinion polls before voters go to the polls. They seem to suggest that the gap is as close as ever. And although the latest YouGov poll seems to suggest there is a, a four-point gap, yes on 48, no on 52, and Servation putting a six-point gap, yes on 47, no on 53. There was another one for STV tonight by Ipsos Mori, which put the gap at only two points, yes on 49, no on 51. By this time tomorrow night, of course, many of the, the ballots which have been cast tomorrow will begin to be counted. Uh, we will begin to find out clearly uh, how, whether well, and how voters have uh, answered the question on that ballot paper, should Scotland be an independent country, yes or no? Tim, many thanks for that. Well, polling stations will open right across Scotland at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. The turnout is expected to be a record high, perhaps more than 80% of the electorate. Local authorities around the country have been setting up more than 5,500 polling stations and officials say they want voters to mark their choice with an X. The number of Scots in work has reached a record high of more than 2.6 million people. Employment rose by 45,000 in May to July and the jobless total fell too. It means the unemployment rate in Scotland is lower than the rate for the UK as a whole. Police in West Lothian are treating an attack on a pensioner in his own home as attempted murder. The 65-year-old was repeatedly stabbed in the house in Bathgate in the early hours of yesterday morning. Detectives want to hear from anyone who may have information about what they're describing as a cowardly and brutal attack. Thick fog and poor visibility have prevented investigators from moving the wreckage of a helicopter which took off from West Lothian yesterday before crashing in East Yorkshire. The two men on board were killed when the private aircraft came down at Flamborough Head. An air accident investigation team at the site has been unable to examine the wreckage because of the weather conditions. Well, let's get the latest weather forecast now from Christopher. David. David, thank you very much indeed. Good evening to you. Well, fairly cloudy tonight, misty and foggy as well, and some light outbreaks of rain or drizzle across eastern parts of the country. And that's how we start things tomorrow morning. A cloudy start, a bit misty and murky in places. And certainly by 8 o'clock, it will continue to be cloudy, but quite mild. Temperatures at low to mid-teens. And again, that uh, mist and fog across eastern parts of the country, quite stubborn to clear through the Firth of Forth, the Firth of Tay, and up towards the Murray Firth. Through the Minches, some sea fog here, and indeed over towards Orkney, but for Shetland some heavy showers to start the day, although those should move away. So as we head through the morning, well, western parts of the country more readily uh, starting to brighten up compared with areas further east, which could well stay fairly misty for a good part of the day. And that's reflected across the UK, certainly across the North Sea coast, uh, a bit misty and murky here. But west of the Pennine, some sunshine, similar to through Wales, the Midlands and towards the south, quite warm across the southern half of the UK, up to around the mid-20s. And for us here in Scotland, in the west and southwest, once the sun comes out, up to 22 degrees, but always that bit cooler, that bit cloudy the further east that you are and this time tomorrow night the mist reforming readily once again and looking ahead towards Friday well we've got this area of high pressure starting to nudge its way in from the Atlantic and that will improve conditions uh, more in the way of uh, sunshine coming around and certainly on Friday is got this cold front working its way across the country so a familiar start to the day with some mist and fog and then some patchy rain there's the front working its way across the country behind it fresher and indeed brighter conditions so for the weekend generally dry and settled with some sunshine at times and finally we lose that mist and low cloud that's been plaguing eastern coasts during recent days that's the forecast for now thank you christopher and that's reporting scotland our next update is during breakfast at 6 25 tomorrow morning but from everyone on the late team here in glasgow and around the country good night <laughs>